at this point, would you change any of your numbers, any of your ratings, any of your price targets? Would you change anything at all uh, uh, for Starbucks based on yesterday's development? No. No, I mean, I think they were pretty early in terms of, you know, giving analysts a heads up that this may happen. You know, they, they were pretty proactive in raising uh, raising uh, the wages. And it's, you know, it's, it's a minimum of 15, but it's actually $17. Uh, the average wage, you know, by the summer of 22. So uh, a lot of those numbers came down already for 22 because of, uh, you know, how proactive they were in, in letting us know. So you're uh, an analyst and in, in, you cover a lot of different areas. So broaden it out a little bit. Do you th and then I'm going to ask Peter, our, our expert, uh, all, you know, whether this is some type of... Um, data point we're going to remember in the future that represents some type of sea change. Uh, do you think it does at this point for the companies you cover, Nick? This is just an explanation point in terms of what we've, we're already seeing. Uh, you know, clearly labor has more power than we've seen in probably over two decades. We're probably going to see, you know, mid to high single digit labor inflation as it is industry-wide. And this, to me, is, uh, you know, just uh, underlying the fact that this is not, tra you know, something that's transient in nature, right? I mean, uh, you can literally quit your job uh, at lunch, walk down the street and, and get hired at a little restaurant, you know, an hour later. Uh, we're hearing things like, you know, $25 is not enough to get a cook for the night shift in the Midwest. Uh, and so... Uh, you know, clearly there's inflation. It's here to stay. It's impacting food costs. It's impacting supply chains as well. So across the board, you know, this year we're going to see probably mid to high single digit inflation. Uh, going forward beyond 22, we're very likely to see at least mid single digit inflation. Again, the highest numbers we're, we've seen in over two decades. Okay. Peter, uh, what what do you think this means, just broadly, in, if anything? Well, I, uh, David, I'm still getting over the cannabis story here, but uh, I'll try to focus back on this one. Uh, you know, the interesting thing is that in the country as a whole, this is the highest level of public support for unions that we've had since the 1960s. So 68% of Americans say they support trade unions now. And I think what's interesting is that employers have so much power uh, in the process of elections that it's astonishing that they ever lose. And in this case, what's interesting is that Starbucks brought all the big guns on this election of like 30 people, right? And they still lost only in this one case. Uh, and so I think the, the importance of this is the kind of demonstration effect, you know, that unions could pop up in restaurants, which are about the hardest place to organize because people don't stay very long in those places, right? So I imagine it will make a lot of companies rethink what they're doing. By the way, what workers want most in unionization is not wage increases. It's the ability to redress management decisions and to do something about what they think the local managers are doing, which is not fair, right? So I think we, maybe if you're on the company side, you're starting to rethink how are we treating these folks? And I think they got two big choices. Do we want to try to buy out union support or do we tr want to try to be even tougher in trying to beat unions in their organizing campaigns? Yeah, Peter, do you, do you think it's indicative of whether this was important, the amount of time and effort that, that Starbucks spent on this? As you said, they brought out the big guns. And, I mean, if it's meaningless, they sure took it seriously. Yeah, no, I think that's right. They took it really seriously. And it's kind of like a small test of how they think they're doing with their employees. And the fact that they could lose anywhere is, is in some ways kind of surprising, right? So, so I think it is going to make them rethink a little bit uh, how they're treating their employees. I don't think this is just about wages. Uh, in fact, I think it's probably a lot, not largely about wages. And frankly, the fact that it's a tight labor market um, in some ways could kind of go the other way. If you don't like your boss and you don't like your employer, you could just walk down the street and get another job. So, you know, it doesn't always make it easier in cases like this to organize, because to organize, you got to stay and you got to care enough about it to bother to vote. 